it's early in the morning and I've been up for about two and a half hours now, three hours, sitting here. Um, I got news uh, yesterday. I got a phone call from a guy in Dallas, Texas. And he said that a friend, um, let me go ahead and tell you about this guy. I met this guy approximately, I don't know, a couple of years ago, a couple of years ago, maybe three years ago, maybe four years ago, he came over to my shop and he brought his car over. Matter of fact, he blocked my driveway. I was actually driving coming back to my shop in Dallas and he was driving. Actually I was driving and he was, I'm sorry, I'm confused here. Um, very, very bad situation going on. Can everybody hear me out there? Can you understand what I'm saying? Give me a thumbs up if, if we got good audio. Um, it's still dark outside. We don't have any light and we're just going to sit here in the dark. We're going to sit here in the dark. Um, I'm actually sitting in the dark. That's why there's no video. I don't know if we can get a light on the subject. We're going to try to, um, you know, my flashlight isn't working. Okay. Let me, let me go get a flashlight. Just hang tight. Okay. Okay. Uh, there. All right. Uh, I would rather keep the camera at a, there we go. Okay. So we're going to talk today about a situation that has given me a lot of anguish. You might call it. Um, there's a lot of people out there that can relate to this situation. It's called depression. It's called personal depression, a depression of the state of mind where you tell yourself you don't even want to live anymore. You want to, you want to just try to do whatever you can without committing suicide to basically die. Um, there was a guy that I knew his name was Sean. He lived in Dallas. I'm going to go ahead and tell you a little story about this guy. Um, I was pulling into my shop in Dallas and he was blocking my driveway. And I'm like, what the fuck, dude? Why are you blocking my driveway? I can't get in my driveway. Um, it was like almost in the middle of the summer. It was 190 degrees outside. Nutsack sweating. Okay. So he kind of backs up and he waves at me, you know, kind of 
uh, silly ass style and, and clumsiness. Like, you know, he doesn't know what to do. He's embarrassed. He is, um, kind of shy. And I looked at him and I told many, I said, well, don't say nothing to him. Um, maybe he just, you know, didn't know and, and, and all this. So we pull in the driveway. He finally backs up. We pull in the driveway. He's driving a Monte Carlo. Now his Monte Carlo is a 1970 Monte Carlo. I believe it was a blue one. It was blue. And it wasn't in the best of shape. It was... Actually, it was a yellow one. The yellow one he drove over. It wasn't in the best of shape, but he was really proud of his car. He lived and breathed this car. He he, he was in love with this car. Okay, I, I made a video of him with his car. Anybody that watches my videos will know the videos that I'm talking about. I made two videos of him and his cars. Um, it was a... Monte Carlo situation, and he owned three Monte Carlos. He had a black one, a blue one, and a yellow one. The yellow one was a big block car. Um, the interior on it was shot. It was ratty. It was, uh, I mean, the car, you know, drivable car. It was a drivable car. But you can hear in this guy's voice that he was lonely. He was depressed and didn't have any friends, and didn't have any family. I mean, I can read this guy like a children's book. Um, I'm a people reader, okay? I can read people. Um, that's one of the gifts that I have. I can read a person by the way they look and the way they act, and, and I, I kind of know what the person already is about before we even start talking. But, you know, besides all that, his name was Sean Brooks, but really was his name Sean Brooks? No, it wasn't Sean Brooks. His real name was Dupree. Um, I believe his real name was Kevin Dupree. After I met this guy, he would call me randomly on the phone. This is after I made the videos of him and his cars um, I went and saw him several times in person. We hung out a couple times. Uh, he was an IT tech. That's what he called himself. IT tech. I didn't know what IT tech was. I, I, you know, I thought that was a person that worked in an office and, you know, just was a tech guy with IT. I didn't even know what IT was. I, you know, I thought it was some internet bullshit. Well, he told me that he was a construction worker. I know this is kind of sounding randomly uh, unusual and, and weird. So he tells me about his construction life. And, and he tells me that um, a long time ago, he was a construction worker, but he also told me a life story. And I talked to this guy for I don't know, probably two years, every, almost every single day in the morning, he would call me in the morning and I would talk to him and, and some of the conversations would go on for, uh, possibly an hour at a time or maybe longer. Um, very depressed person. He was very depressed. He talked about not living anymore. He talked about how his dad abused him all his life. And he would go on and on about this abuse. Now, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, this guy was 70 years old. 70 year old. Living, he lived in an apartment. Um, I believe it was a one bedroom apartment. He wouldn't ever let me go into his apartment. I went over to his place twice. And wait in the Wait out here. Don't come in. You can't come in. There's nowhere to stand. You can't even stand in my apartment. I have a talking bird. The bird lives in my bathroom. Do you have a window in your bath? No, I don't have a window in my bathroom. I've had the bird for 25 years. 
If I put him outside next to a window, he, he hollers and screams. He won't shut up. So he had this bird that lived in a bathroom, um, a talking bird. And he lived basically in his bedroom. By the conversations that we had, he lived in his bedroom, on his bed. And the way that he talked, his apartment, did I mention to you that his apartment, he lived in his apartment for 37 years. He was a resident of an apartment on the first floor of this apartment complex for 37 years. He had a friend, um, or he made a friend, and he had these three cars. He had to pay extra to park his cars at this apartment complex. Um, and he would tell me about the destruction and the mental abuse that his father gave him throughout his whole life, that when his dad died, it was a happy day. But he would go on and on and on about his dad abusing him and, and what his dad mentally did to him, that his life was ruined because his dad tormented him and treated him like a piece of shit. So in turn, and he told me this several times, in turn, he treated people like shit on purpose. Um, he actually got married to a girl one time and this girl was extremely overweight. He would go to work and I can only go by what he told me. I can only go by what he said. This is stories that very disturbing, very disturbing and very unusual conversations I would have with Sean. Um, he would tell me about his wife that he would go to work and he would tell me that he was actually a good looking guy back in the day and he didn't have problems getting women, but he married this woman that was extremely overweight, extremely overweight. And then the abuse started, the abuse started. He would, he would tell me stories about how his wife wanted this guy to move into their house and be their roommate. Well, what was going on? I mean, why would you, why would your wife do that? I would go to work and, and everybody would, would uh, torment me and tell me that my wife was a big fat slob and she was ugly. And what, what am I supposed to do? How can I defend myself against all the people that I was working with at the construction site or in the cabinet department where I was building cabinets. I got fired from my job for no reason. Um, my first job I worked at, I, I made $3 a fucking hour. Um, I never really owned anything except my cars. I love my cars. I, 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 I'll never get rid of my cars. My cars are my life. He would talk about his cars all the time. But another thing he talked about a lot is how he didn't want to live. Um, he told me his name was Sean Brooks, but after talking to him for several intensive, I don't know how long, uh, almost a fucking year, um, he finally told me that his name was not Sean Brooks that he had his name changed because he hated his family and he hated his life and he wished he would have never fucking been born and that his whole life was just a complete disaster. He had two brothers and he also had a couple nephews and he told me that his nephews hated his guts and he didn't ever want to talk to him. One time he told me that when his brother passed away, one of his brothers passed. Now, he was the youngest one, so you can imagine his brothers are, if he was 69, 70, of course, his brothers were 10, 12, 15 years older than him. Well, one of his brothers passed away, and his nephew called him and said, hey, 
My dad left you $1,000 in his will. How do you want me to get you the money? Well, let me go ahead and go even further. Sean didn't have any money. Sean lived on Social Security. His apartment rent, I believe, was $1,100 a month. Did I tell you that he lived in this fucking apartment for 37 fucking years? All he wanted and all he loved, and I mean, it, it was his cars. He had three Monte Carlos, 1970s. He was a 70 Monte Carlo guru. Sean died in his fucking apartment, okay? Alone. He died alone in his fucking apartment of 37 fucking years. The hoarder, disasterless, ghastly fucking place that he lived. He would describe his apartment to me, 37 years, never painted the same fucking appliances in the apartment, the same appliances from 37 fucking years ago. He would never let the apartment complex come into his apartment and, and do any type of maintenance whatsoever. He sent me some pictures. He had a welder that he wanted to give to me that he purchased. I don't know where he purchased it. But when he sent me a picture of it, I couldn't even tell where the fucking welder was. It was such a hoarder, disasterless mess. Sometimes he would be talking to me, and I'd hear this bird in the background hollering. And I'd say, what's going on? Oh, that fucking bird in the bathroom. He won't shut up. My bird won't shut up. In the background, and I'm like, motherfucker, dude. What the fuck? Well, I can't get rid of him. I had him for 30 years. I mean, what do you want me to do? Kill him? I can't kill him. I can't. Nobody's going to want him. Well, put him in front of a window. I don't have anywhere to put him. There's nowhere. I don't have any place in my apartment to put him. What do you got in your apartment? I got auto parts for my cars when they break down. I got to take care of my cars. I love my cars. Don't you understand? He would talk to me in the morning. He'd call me every morning around 7 o'clock. And then I didn't hear from him for a while, so I kind of got worried, so I started calling him to make sure that he was okay. And when I ride my bicycle... I would call him as I was riding my bicycle. And I believe by me talking to him and calling him for the past two years gave him a little bit of strength to be the human being that he wanted to be. You can't neglect the human being. You can't look at somebody and say, this is a weird motherfucker. This is a fucking guy that's got mental issues. And I don't want nothing to do with this piece of shit. Leave me the fuck alone. Don't call me anymore. I, You know, your problems aren't my problems. You can't fucking do that. If you fucking do that, then you are the fucking problem because you don't have the compassion to be the human being that you need to fucking be. So, of course, I talk to this fucking guy. All right, I can relate to this guy. I can be his friend, distance, long distance friend. I don't have nobody, Pete. I go to, I, I meet my buddy, my construction friend that I've known for 45 fucking years. We go to, uh, we go over to uh, Golden Corral and I, I stuff my face with food. I overeat as much food as I can fucking eat because I want to get sick. I want to fucking die. I don't want to fucking live no more. He went to Golden Corral with his friend and had a hell of a time. Sent me pictures of the food he was eating. He would send me pictures uh Hey Pete, look here. Look at the look at my beautiful plate of food. I'm gonna sit here. 
He would go to Golden Corral on Saturday mornings, all you can eat Saturday mornings, and he would stay there. He would go there at opening, and he'd stay there until they wouldn't serve him anymore. And when I say that, they would he would stay there and just gourd out on food and, and just eat as much fucking food as he can and, and basically be a sloppy, filthy pig. And he would tell me, I don't care. I don't care about my life. I don't care about what I do. And if people want to watch me be a slob and, 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 and gourd on this food and be a slob, then let them. My name's Sean Brooks. That's what I had my name changed to because I hate my fucking dad because my fucking dad ruined my fucking life and I hate my fucking brothers and I hate my fucking life. That's the attitude that Sean Brooks had. That's the life that he fucking lived day in and day out because he didn't have any friends. He had a friend at the apartment complex. He put trust in a kid. He put trust into a kid at this apartment complex because he needed help on his car. His, he told me that his lower back was killing him, that he could hardly walk. Uh, me and Minnie actually sent him a present in the mail, a Christmas present, and it was one of these these gift packs, you know, with the meat in it and the, the cheese sticks and the, the crackers. And so we decided, you know, let's send Sean a present. He's probably hasn't had a Christmas present in 20 fucking years. Two weeks after Christmas passed, I said, hey, I haven't heard. Did you get your Christmas present? What Christmas present? Well, me and Minnie sent you. Pete, I haven't even been. I can't walk to the fucking... I can't go to the mailbox. You don't understand. My back is killing me. My, my legs hurt. How can I go? I'll go there later today. I'll go get it. So he calls me the next morning and he's crying on the phone. He's crying because I'm the first person that's ever sent him anything in the mail for Christmas since he was a child at home. And he's crying to me on the phone with the fucking bird yakking in the background. I feel sorry for this bird living in a bath. Shut up! Shut the fuck up! And then you hear the, da the door slam. So the bird's in this bathroom um, in his cage. No windows in the dark. Why don't you put your bird in front of the window so he can be like, There's no room in my apartment. I, there's no space to put him in front of a window. You can't even walk in my car. You got to crawl over stuff. He was going to send me a welder or he asked me if I wanted a welder when he sent me the picture. I couldn't even see the welder in the picture. There was so much hoardable stuff in there. Um, he would talk to me about the delicious meals that he was cooking at home. And... I believe at Thanksgiving time, he went and bought two turkeys. He bought two turkeys and he cooked up the turkey and he would tell me how he would cook the turkey on very, very slow and he'd let it cook all night long. Maybe that was the, uh, I don't remember what the fuck it was, but very, very depressed, lonely person this guy was. Yesterday, I got a call well, let's go back a little ways before we talk about the call. The last time that I talked to Sean, Kevin Dupree, I believe his name was Kevin Dupree in real life, but he went by Sean Brooks. The last time that I talked to Sean was approximately a month and a half ago. Um, it was about seven o'clock at night, my time. And I continuously called him throughout the days of the last time that I talked to him because he went to Golden Corral with his friend, Paul. And when he got home from Golden Corral, he told me, Pete, I don't feel good. Something's going on. Now, this is when the COVID thing was going around. 
Something's wrong with me. My head is killing me. It feels like somebody hit me in the head with a hammer. You got a sinus infection. I can't stand up. I can't fucking breathe. It's <coughs> That's what he was doing on the phone. I'm, I'm thinking to myself, is this guy real or is he faking it or what's going on here? I mean, what the fuck is happening? He says, Pete, I can't breathe. I can't. My head's killing me. Call the fucking emergency 911. Call them. No, I'm going to lay down. I'm just going to lay here. I got to go to sleep. Two or three days pass. And now I'm talking to him on the phone. Of course, this is in the middle of the fucking winter. And Dallas is having a freeze storm. And he says, it's freezing cold in my apartment, Pete. It's freezing cold. I'm, I'm under all my covers. Well, you didn't answer your phone. I, I couldn't find my phone. What do you want me to fucking do? They're hidden under the covers. I can't move. Turn your heater on. I can't afford the electricity. All my money's going for fucking rent at this fucking apartment that I've lived in for 37 fucking years. I just want to fucking die. Why am I here? Why am I fucking here? That's what he said. Who wants me? I'm a fat piece of shit slob. I used to be good looking. I used to be trim and fit. I used to go to White Rock Lake. I used to ride by bicycle. I used to be able to pick up women. I used to be able to talk to people. Now look at me. I'm 70 years old and I'm a fat, ugly fucking slob. I can't even look in my mirror. I've taken my toothpaste out of my tube and I've, I've smashed it all over my mirror in my bathroom so I don't have to look at my ugly face. I just want to fucking die. That's all he would tell me. Not all the time, but a lot of times. The last time I talked to him, it was about 7 o'clock at night, my time. It was freezing ass cold here. It was freezing ass cold there. I said, turn your heater on. I don't want to turn my heater on. I can't afford the electricity. They'll turn my, my lights off. If I get cold, I'll go in the bathroom with my fucking bird. I'll sit on the toilet with my hair dryer and I'll warm myself up. My legs hurt. I can barely get out of bed. My, my calf muscles and my, my shin bones are killing me. I can, I can barely crawl to the bathroom, Pete. I said, okay, well, I said, look, dude, all right, call 911, please. I need food, Pete. I don't have no food. He said that he called Paul and asked Paul to bring some food over to him. And that he didn't know if Paul brought any food to him because he never even heard from Paul but that he couldn't leave his apartment. He needed some medicine and all this other bullshit. I said, damn, dude, if I was there, I'd fucking bring it to you. You know, I'm in Mo I'm in Utah. He goes, I know you would, Pete, but, you know, I just really don't want to fucking live. I don't want to be here anymore. That was the last time I talked to him. I called him the next morning. He never fucking answered. I texted the motherfucker umpteen fucking times. I don't know how fucking many times. And then from the way that he talked about his family and the way that he talked about how he treated other people, I started to get this feeling that, oh, so now this guy's fucking ignoring me. Now he doesn't want to talk to me. Now he's just fucking ignoring me and okay, well, fuck it then. I won't talk to him. So I didn't talk to him. So a month and a half passes yesterday. I get the fucking call. The guy died in his apartment. He died on his bed. They found him dead a month. He was dead for over a month. Um, Paul did say that he did bring food and medicine over there, but Sean would not answer the phone. And he said it by his door. And he tried to call him and never heard from him. And he was thinking the same thing, that he was just ignoring him. But the guy died. The guy fucking died in his apartment of 37 years, lived in this fucking apartment by himself. I asked him the night that he told me, he kept telling me he wanted to die. I said, okay, well, what are you going to do about your cars? 
You got to take care of your cars, buddy. You love your cars. That's all you got. Yeah, that's right. All I got is my fucking car, Pete. Let the apartment complex have them. Fuck them. I should own this fucking place. I've been here 37 fucking years. Take it easy, bro. It's okay. Relax. It's all right. No, it's not all right. I just want to fucking die. The point that I'm making here, okay, is that there's a lot of people out there that are depressed. There's a lot of people out there that live the life that Sean Brooks lived, that are living that life right now. And you can't give up in life. You can't lay in your fucking bed and tell everybody in the world, I want to die. I don't want to live no more. It's a very sad fucking story.